All right. So in this case, we shall quickly uh, rush through our revisions for probability. As we are revising for our tests ahead, we need to understand some basic questions when it comes to probability. On question number seven, we are given question 7.1, an entire sample space, take note, an entire sample space is made up of two complementary events, S and T, where the probability of P of uh, S complement, as you can see there, we've got this part representing uh, S complement, the probability of what is not in S is given as 0 0.33, meaning to say this represent not in S, that is not part of S. Okay, that is what you're given. So remember, they are complementary events. So the question here is complete the statement. The probability of S plus the probability of T is going to give us a, if they are complementary events. So let's go back to our notes and review what is it about our complementary events. They must be equal to one. The probability of what is in S plus what is in T must, these are two sets, everything must give us entirely a one. So the question is now, write down the value of the probability of T by understanding that these two, their probability add up to one. We can use that as an advantage to calculate the probability of T. So this is what we are simply going to have because we are saying the probability of what is in S plus the probability of what is in T is supposed to be equal to one. But remember, these are complementary sets. These are complementary sets. So what does it actually mean in that case? It simply means this T, remember, let's go back to our complement again. What is it that you understand about when you are given, let's just say we have got the set S and we also have the set T. This is S, this is T. These two together united, their probability must give you a one. Guys, let's go back to our revision again. What is not in S, meaning to say this is our S. What is not in S is going to be here. This is the part of what is not in S, S complement. Okay, but this is again S here. This is our S. This is not in S, this one. Not in S, meaning to say we're talking about S complement. And this is what is in set S. So meaning to say, these two, because they are supposed to add up to one, S and T combined. You're supposed to get one. So it simply means from our normal understanding of the complement, the probability of what is in S plus the probability of what is not in S. If you combine what is found in S here, you combine it to what is not in S, this one. This one is not in S. Meaning to say, talking of S complement. If you combine these two, you must get a one. This is what we understand. You must get a one. So what does it mean? It simply means PT, this one. It simply represents the complement of S, the probability of what is not in S. Guys, this is PS, this one. This is PS. This is the same thing here. So if this is the same thing, here. Yeah. And this one is the same thing. So it means these two are supposed to represent the same thing also. From this understanding alone, it tells you whenever you deal with the complement of the sets, since the probability of what is an S plus its complement must give you a one, and this is the same situation that we have here. Therefore, we can say the probability of what is in T, the one that we are being asked here. That's why they're saying write down they are not even say calculate because they know you're supposed to understand this idea. It is equal to the probability of S complement, what is not in S, which is what? 
0.33. We are not calculating anything there. We are just checking the answer. So if you understand this idea, it was going to be easier for you. All right, so this is how you answer your complement sets. The probability of what is in S plus its complement. What is not in S must give you a 1. And what is not in S in this case is what we are representing as our probability of T. Since these two, they add up to 1. So in actual sense, these are sets like this where you can find them uh, related like this one where you can actually find them related like this, S on its own and T on its own. That is what we have. All right, so let's revise, guys, as much as we can. All right, 7.2. A survey was conducted among 180 residents of a small town. So these are the number of people representing our sample space in the town. So that's your sample space here everything that you are given to establish how many contracted tuberculosis which is tb or the human immunodeficiency virus which is the hiv during the last five years the results were as follows in the space of five years x people who were diagnosed with tb 30 both TB and HIV, and so on and so on. All right. So this is it. They want you to represent the information above in a Venn diagram. So this is what you do. You take note. How many sets am I given? How many subsets? The information that I'm given. I'm talking about those with TB and with HIV. Then after that, knowing that I've got two sets, I do not know they're going to be separate like this. I do not know they're going to be combined like this. I do not know they're going to be related like this. So I have to check if there is what represents both. So there we are given. 30 people were diagnosed with both. Both, meaning to say in this presentation, that we are going to have there is an intersection both is representing the intersection of the two sets so when you say this set will intersect with another one like this because we have got those who were diagnosed both all right let's say this is the set of tb uh this is the set of hiv this is what we have so try by all means to fill in from that part representing both the intersection start by filling from the intersection so we are given the intersection 30 representing both so they are 30 we're already given they are already 30 these ones they are there on the intersection this one they are for both they're in part of tb they're also in part of hiv this is what it means Okay, let's move on. Since we've filled in this part, we can now fill whatever part that we want. Okay, let's start from the first one. X people were diagnosed with TB. Meaning to say this part here represents X. Here, the wall of this set. That is where our X is supposed to be. It's supposed to cover where TB is. Guys, you cover like this. They're saying TB, not TB only, TB like this. You cover it like this. You go with it. You go with it up to this. This is where your X is. As we can see, this X here, it is also covering this part where that is. That is also inside. We also have this 30 inside of X people. So the question is, how are we going to represent these ones remaining here if we if we are to consider properly these ones? Representing what? TB only. How are we going to present them? Because these are 30. They are for both HIV and TB. So we must remove these 30 out of the set that we had of what? Of TB, which had what? X people. We must remove the 30 that we are given. So to remove is to subtract. So this one is going to be 
x minus 30. Here they were x, the wall of this part, it was x. So you remove these ones on the intersection. We move on to HIV positive. How many are they? They are 69. The wall of this, if you cover here like this, is 69. If you cover this set, it represents the 69 people that we are given. So how many will represent this part only, this section only for HIV only? They only have HIV, these ones. So we have to subtract again. So it was supposed to be 69 minus 30, which was going to give us uh, 39. So these are 39. Representing, representing what? HIV only. So this section of X minus 30, it's TB only. This one of 39, it is HIV only. HIV positive only. Only that part. Okay, let's move on. 51 people did not have either. This. They did not have, they do not have any of this. So where are they? Outside of these two sets. So the 51 is simply outside of your, uh, of this two set, but inside of what? The sample space that you're given. So that is where our 51 is. That is the idea there. You've presented your Venn diagram. Do not worry about that X. Do not worry about that X. They want you to calculate that because they are saying on oh, 7.22, how many people contracted TB only? How many people contracted TB only? And we say it from the diagram that we are seeing, TB only is this part of X minus 30. This is the part of TB only, which is X minus 30. All right, that's 7.22. Let me just save it here. So the question is, if we need the part that is representing uh, TB only, which is represented by X minus 30, as we need exactly how many people are there. We, can, we cannot say there are X minus 30, no. That's not how we answer this. You're supposed to say there are 20, there are six, whatever that you're given. So in order for us to know these people, we must find X. We are forced to calculate X. The question is not even asking you about X, but there's no way. The first thing, we have to find X, calculate or determine the value of X. How can we obtain X? We are given the whole sample space representing the number of residents, which is 180. So what does it mean? From your diagram here, it means every section on your diagram must add up to 180. Every section, this part of TB only, this part here of TB only, which is X minus that, this part of both TB and HIV, which is that plus this part here of the HIV only, which is 39 plus this part representing those who do not have any of these two, which is 51, must give us the total number of people that we are given, which is 180. So what is it that you now have? It is an equation that you are supposed to solve since we have an equal sign. This left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So that's an equation. So we simply have to collect our terms. In this case, we only have one part representing X. It's just X, this one. So it was simply to collect the like terms in that case, meaning to say to add up the numbers that are remaining. Minus 30 plus 30 plus 39 plus 59 plus 51. You add the numbers you were going to obtain uh, plus 90 in that case, which is equal to... 180. So how can you solve for X? Simply transpose the positive 90 this side. It becomes a negative. It was a positive, remember? So that's X is going to be 180 minus 90, which is 90. But that is not our question. We are using this so that we can answer this question, which is for those representing TB only. So therefore, those ones for TB only is going to be what? Since it is represented by X minus 30, and we have 
the x, which is 90. So it's simply going to be 90 minus 30. So that's 90 minus 30, which is 60. So in this case, uh, talking of the number of people who contracted TB only, they are 60. So there are 60 uh, patients in that case. That is what we have. You must use the idea that you are given there. Then from this, we can answer this question, 7.23. How clear the probability that a person selected at random? A, we will have, we will only, take note, we will only have been diagnosed with TB. We will only, 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 meaning to say, we are talking of the TB only. And this is exactly what we calculated here. Remember, TB only, we said there are 60 people. So the probability there, it is simply going to be 60 over. Remember the total, the number of that section that is presented over the total number of people, which is what? 180 residents. So it's 60 over 180. Eight. You can reduce this. You can write it as 1 over 3. You can write it as a decimal, 0, 0,33, whatever that follow the instruction that you'll be given. Or just write it as what? 60 over 180. You can also write it as a percentage if you multiply by 100%, depending with how you're going to present your answer. All right, then on number B, we need the probability that the person selected at random will not have any of these two diseases, we will not have any. So these are the ones that are do not have these ones. They are outside. Guys, they did not have e either. They, that's not having anything. How many are they? 51. So they were already given. These are 51. So that's 51 out of the total of 180, like that. So that's 51 out of 180. You can write it as a reduced fraction, 17 over 60, or you can write it as a, a decimal or as a percentage if you multiply by 100%. So these are your typical questions that you are going to actually have working with your probability. You need your basics of uh, the Venn diagram, how to present on a Venn diagram, the understanding of different probabilities, considering the complementary events and so on. So we shall have revision so that you do understand how are they going to ask you uh, these typical questions.